Wow, wait, was my knee down on that first one? I'm getting all kinds of style points on this. Not bad for 40 years old, huh? Not sure how I <laughs> hit that position. There's, there's some style points here as well. A little like, uh, I don't know what to call that. MC Hammer? MC Hammer move here? <laughs> Recently, I played a doubles match that had a lot of firsts in it for me. It was my first league match, coming back and training and trying to play good tennis, you know, good tennis for me. It was my first outdoor tennis match after starting to get outside and train outdoors. And it was also my first match with this doubles partner. And during this match, unfortunately, my serve really let me down. Normally, like my most solid shot got super shaky. And so in this video and the one after this, I'm gonna be breaking down point by point by point the entire league match, letting you know like what I could have done better, what you can take away from and learn from how we played together and how we teamed up against this opposing team. So let's jump right in. Uh. Yes, tough ball. So kind of an awkward uh, backhand return here. This is a shot that I've been working really hard on, just with my backhand in general. You can see it, this got close to me and tight. But I, I want to kind of make the, the point here that as long as you can avoid the net player, anything is fair game, especially when you're partnered up with a, another doubles player who ha who's like-minded and just wants to really get on top of the net. So once we both identify that this player is not making a play at the ball, and that's how I immediately start sprinting forwards. My partner is on his toes getting ready to attack, and we're just both really an offense uh, mindset. And that's what happens when, uh, when you serve and stay back against an offensively minded team, is you just leave a lot of space for attacking. No, 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 no. Nice return. Nice move, nice move. Two. Notice uh, my comment here, my, my compliments, my partner for this move here. He didn't even do anything. He didn't, by the way, look at, again, just an ugly return of serve here by me, just a block and just struggling to just find my timing. And watch this move by my partner, Matt. Look at, look at him just running here towards the, the middle right before our opponent makes contact with this shot. And so that's why I'm kind of patting him on the back here is I, I know that this person's paying attention just puts a little bit of squeeze on them, puts a little bit of extra pressure to try to make that like a perfect shot. And so look at the, this is so key, like the partnership and the communication and the support is so key if you want to play good doubles. Look at the, the racket clap here and I'm telling him nice move. He didn't even touch the ball. But I, what I'm really doing here is just like subtly giving my, my partner this first game, first points we've ever played together, what I'm really doing is sending him the message, I want you moving, I want you moving. Uh, go, go, like cross, cut off as much as you can, do as much as you can up there. Um, I'm giving him permission, yes, yes, move, move. And the earlier you can give a, a good doubles player that permission and that freedom to move around and do their thing, the better you, you guys are probably gonna do. To, uh, so I usually, I mean, yeah, what do you want? I just point where I want you to serve. Yeah. One of three, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and then I'll go or stay. Got it. And I, I'm more of a reaction than a than a call poke. That's fine. You see a lot of fists from me instead of open. That's fine. That's fine. But I'll go. I'll if be reach, yeah. If you can reach it, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so a couple things. First of all, it only took us what seven seconds to set up our signals. That's all it took. We didn't even talk about it ahead of time. And secondly, again, notice that I'm giving him permission. I'm giving him freedom. Yeah, go, go, go. Take whatever you can reach. Go ahead and take it. Oh. <sighs> I got it. Heads up, heads up, heads up. Oh, wow. Jeez. It was really windy. It was very tough to measure the, the wind. I'm actually really happy with that get, but just couldn't quite measure the, the distance there. Great lob. That's a great move. Great, Poach. Oh. Come on. 
That's my bad, my bad. Uh, so I, I'm apologizing here because uh, the signal that he gave me was not for out wide. And I remember we uh, early on identified that this player on the deuce side really liked his backhand. So I'm apologizing for putting it in the wrong place. Uh, not where my partner was expecting it and towards the strength of, uh, of our opponent. That's my bad, my bad. Sorry, I was leaning. Oh, oh. come on. Oh. Ah. No, 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 no. It's back. Oh. Oh. Wow, wait, was my knee down on that first one? I'm getting all kinds of style points on this. Uh, not quite down. That's That's close, though. Man, I'm not quite sure how I... Not bad for 40 years old, huh? Not sure how I <laughs> hit that position. There's, there's some style points here as well. A little like, uh, I don't know what to call that. MC Hammer? MC Hammer move here? <laughs> ah, frustrating to miss that one. That's why, that's why the hands are on my hips there. You know how it goes. The, the, the one you're most prepared for is always the one you miss. <laughs> All right, come on, come on, come on. It's me kind of trying to pump myself up there uh, a little bit. I, I, I felt all kinds of just out of sorts on this day. The, I'm, I'm still, I'm trying to get acclimated to playing outside after just doing tons of training, tons of hitting indoors for years and just not doing much outside. So I'm, I'm just kind of sensing this like lack of rhythm and like spatial, like just trying to find the ball and find the right timing. Uh, it's just not, I know it doesn't look, it doesn't look bad yet. But I, I, I was just having a hard time. I could feel like just a lack of uh, rhythm in general. Come on. I love that I laughed that. I love that I laughed that mistake off. Another creative half volley. I mean, this is this is a this is like the volley I'm working for and that I want, you know, all day. Just closed my racket face just a little bit too much on this, uh, but I absolutely love that. I immediately can see this, you know, me smiling there, laughing it off like that's it's exactly the shot I wanted. You know, you, you have to, you have to, you've got to laugh if you're going to be aggressive, if you're going to be closing, if you're going to be trying to like create chaos up at the net, you have to be able to laugh off those mistakes because they're they're gonna come when you when you just charge in there all the time. <clears throat> heads up, heads up, heads up. Oh. <clears throat> nice shot. Nice, good put away. Nope, back, back. Really nice play uh, from the player in orange. This volley, not easy, especially with me closing forwards and, and looking to make a move on it. I'm just a little bit behind the action here. Um, I should have made that shift just a little bit sooner, especially given how nice of a, of a return that was. Uh, I'm just a little bit behind the action. My, my timing's just not quite there. A fantastic first volley and then just per perfect placement here. I mean, if I don't make a play at this, maybe my partner can get a racket on it, but it's like just in the spot where I'm like, ah, I better, yeah, I better try to do something, better try to get this back, because it's just tough for both of us. Otherwise, it was a really nice play. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna dial that in. Don't need to swing so hard. I think too, I made the mistake on that 50-50 ball. I shouldn't have gone back cross court. He's the better volleyer. I should have gone down the down the down the middle. Uh, which one is the better volleyer? 
The guy or the guy in the orange. Orange is better, boy. Yeah. Okay. What's serve you like? Uh, I like tea on both these guys actually. Okay. So I'll do that tea body mostly. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll save the wide one for a surprise if I need yep. it. Yep. Yep. So you want you want signals too or no? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll push more. Okay. Is that okay? So all that communication is so, so critical. Like we're just kind of getting to know each other. Like what serve locations do you like? Uh, do you want me to give you signals? Do you want me to stay? Do you want me to poach? Um, and, and notice again, this took us all of like 10 seconds. Uh, these are the conversations you should be having, especially with a first part, uh, a first time doubles partner uh, when you don't know each other well yet. Um, these are the kind of conversations you really should be having as soon as possible in the match. No worries, no worries. Sorry. I love establishing, I, I, first of all, just in general, I love poaching, but I love establishing the poach early, right in the first, second point. Like the, if I can get a, a, at least one big poach in at my first two points where I'm the server's partner, ideally both, uh, it, it, right away, they uh, returners would tend to kind of respect that. And so watch my, my move here, just like a hop, and then catching myself. So th this is not a poach. And so 100%, I, I changed the, the target of the returner there. He hit it right to me. I shanked that volley. It should have been a, you know, a clean kind of put away. But I, lo I love watching this back and just seeing that little, that little hop there, just getting them to think about it. And that just ends up just pulling the ball towards me. I, I love making those plays. And so this, uh, a, full, a full poach, and I'm moving just a little bit later, and I think I, I moved early enough that he saw me and he was trying to, to beat me. And the fact that he did see me and he is trying to change his target is probably mostly what accounts for that, you know, basically a swing and a miss. It's a good serve too, but I mean, he's a good player. He's not gonna swing and miss all that often. Just, do, just making, the, making the move. Watch my partner, by the way, uh, covering back behind me. So we planned that out with signals ahead of time. <laughs> oh man. And watch the, my early, so this is a fake. Uh, so watch the early, uh, just the early kind of hop towards the, towards the middle again. And uh, I remember, I mean, this player in the orange, like uh, I always kind of have, I feel like kind of a sixth sense for how much gravity a returner has towards the alley. In other words, how, how um, sensitive their trigger is to change direction and go down the alley. And when I get a, a real strong feeling from a player that they, they have a very sensitive trigger for the alley, I just, I love, I love playing with, uh, with players like that uh, and just kind of making everything as difficult as possible for them. Uh, I think he's pretty spooked about what, whatever I'm doing <laughs> I think so, up there. I think so. Yeah, is he? Yeah, so I just I, I get so much satisfaction out of uh, even if it's not true. To be, I mean, who knows? Maybe he was just having a bad return day. But um, I like to think I was influencing what was going on there, and I, I love feeling like I'm I'm having that like subconscious uh, impact. Ah. Yeah, good hands, good hands, good hands. Nice save, nice job, partner. Nice job. Heads up. Wow. Oh, good over serve, George. With the wind, that ball would have been on the baseline. <laughs> it would have been, been long if I was on the other side. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good serve. Sit, sit. <laughs> nice pattern there. Um, just got off rhythm on the last one, I guess. But again, watch, uh, I'm just a little behind the rhythm here. Uh, and I, I remember just in general uh, feeling this way. Here's the serve, here's the return. And so I'm closing forwards into my right initially, to kind of close down the alley, but I want to shift towards the middle. And I'm just too late, I'm just too late on my, my shift towards the middle. Uh, or maybe I just saw this uh, setup 
from the baseline player. But I remember just in general feeling like I was a little bit behind in my uh, my flow of kind of like moving around the the court during the point. And this would be um, this would be a, a, a definitely a case of me just being a little bit behind the timing that it would have required to get a, a racket on that ball. And so as we go through, notice my, my movement here, how it's kind of a circular or a triangle uh, movement. Initially, forwards to the right, and then forwards to the left, and then back again to cover the, the center of the court in case the net player gets the, the next ball, and then repeat, uh, forwards to the right. This time, look at my, my, how I'm uh, more early here shifting relative to contact. Before he hits, I'm already shifting. So this is me squeezing and basically you know, giving him the, the message, go ahead. If you want to try to beat me down the alley, you can try. Uh, but I'm going to squeeze towards the middle and try to cut it off. Really nice hands by the other net player cutting this off. Just really fun, a uh, devil's point all around. And just shank that volley. Just, just not ready for it. Thank you. Four first serves. We haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, yeah. Four first serves. Four points. Yeah. Hit doubles, huh? <laughs> All right, here we go. It's almost like the stuff we, we try to coach, right? Right. Almost. Almost. Dur before that, uh, during the previous changeover, we were talking about how uh, we both missed a lot of first serves. My first service game went to deuce, like I don't know, four or five times. Um, only double faulted, I think once in in that first service game. But just a lot, in doubles, first serves are a huge premium. If you can't put your first serve in and they're just waiting for a second serve, it's a completely different scenario, situation. So much tougher to get control of points on a second serve. Wow, great volley. Yeah, that's a nice slice. I got lucky there. Oh, come on, wind. How did the wind not turn? <laughs> nope. Good move, good move, good move. All day. Yeah, that's 100% your ball. The comments I made earlier in the set about not needing to swing that hard on the return, I want you to watch the, the tempo that I swing at this, uh, this return. Just watch the speed. It's confident, but I, I'm not like trying to hit a winner. I'm not taking a huge cut at it. Um, it's, it's also not um, pushy. You know, it's not tentative. Uh, and finding that, that tempo, for me, is so critical on return of serve. If I go beyond that, that solid tempo, then I spray the ball, I miss lots of shots. But if, if in doubles against a good, uh, solid uh, net team, if you're tentative at all, then they just start really making you pay for it. So I feel like that was just the right, uh, I'm starting to find my rhythm, my tempo a little bit on the return. Good move, good move, good move. All day. Yeah, that's 100% your ball. Uh, notice the communication there again. I'm encouraging him. Your ball, your ball. Good move, good move. Like I, I want him to feel 100% free to wh whatever he feels is an opportunity. I want him to feel totally empowered to go for it. I don't think Blue Shirt wants a piece of it. Honestly. No, I don't like, think so. he's not doing. I'm not worried. Yeah, you're right. yeah. So I'm just, uh, reason why I say that. I, I'm just telling him like just don't even worry about the alley. Just a anything. Uh, Chris cross court. Um, and that was just the feeling I had was he, he's not making any kind of move. He's not even trying to fake that he's doing anything up there. So just easy, you know, all day cross court. Anytime you can help potentially your partner like see an opportunity, uh, it's, it's huge. If, if you can help them dial in their, their rhythm, their, their confidence, even just a little bit, it's massive for the team. Nope. No, 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 no. in the sense uh, Greg is kind of the, the boss. Uh, like he, so. he, he wants all the action up there. I think you're right. And, and deservedly so. I mean, he's got oh, his, no, hands, his hands are incredible. All right. What's our mantra? First off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying the, uh, Greg there is the, the one in the orange shirt. Um, so commentary I'm just ma basically making there is, is I, I just get the sense he wants to kind of be in control. He's like the more, he's the aggressor, he's the more confident one in terms of moving, in terms of taking the ball. And so um, 
anytime my partner and I can kind of get that sense and just kind of lean on the, the opponent in the, in the blue shirt, then that's exactly the, the direction we want to go. Ooh, it's our, wow, is that a backhand volley? Wow. I need, I need more of these volley. I, play, I played a whole bunch of mixed doubles this past weekend. I, I really needed that uh, volley. Man, I'm not sure where that, that came from. I just stuck that. Just hinged the, just really laid the racket back and just really hinged it and snapped it uh, forwards uh, quite a bit. I, man, I, I could have used some of that uh, this past weekend. Uh, notice the, uh, the planned uh, poach again. Oh, maybe, it wasn't, maybe it wasn't planned. If it, if it was planned, my partner didn't switch. He didn't get the memo. Interesting. Uh, but based on my timing here, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, just, I'm definitely just thinking I'm going. So maybe we had some miscommunication here. But hey, it worked out. Yeah, it's our... Nope. Planned poach there. Fake there. Yeah, and I love, I'm just loving it. <laughs> so two planned poaches in a row. And now this is the fake. The, the key difference between a fake and an actual poach is the timing. On a fake, you'll see me hop right around the ball bounce. And I'm just kind of giving him something to look at here. Uh, and giving him something to think about and making him wonder, what, is, this a re is this for real? Is he just faking? And then I'm just hopping back again to where I started. And, and frankly, that's, I almost kind of enjoy that more than a put away volley. Uh, when I hop to one side, and then have enough time to hop back again. And notice how I'm like just showing him my racket <laughs> as the ball goes into the net. I'm just like basically like demonstrating, yeah, I'm right. I'm, I'm like, I'm in your head. Like I, I'm the one who's in control here. And I'm just kind of subtly signaling like, ah, like I'm, I'm sitting here waiting for it. Like I already knew the ball was going in the net. It's a little bit of a, of a dick move to be honest. <laughs> but this is, I mean, this is, uh, you know, high level, like, uh, high level, you know, competitive, like if you want to gain a like, competitive edge, after, when you play college, you know, tennis, uh, this type of thing just becomes second nature because the, the intensity is just so high. Everybody's trying to get a lit, just a tiny little foothold or handhold. And so uh, right here, like I know that I already know the ball's in the net. Like it's, it's already going in the net and I'm just putting my, my racket out just to like show it to him <laughs> that I'm in the, that I'm in the right place. Is that about, what about that first serve, sir? <laughs> but we went eight for eight, right? <laughs> Once we said it, we were like, oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's that oh. thing about doubles? <laughs> Serves and returns, I think, is yeah. something that people say. So that's the end of the first set of my first league match, playing at 4-5 with, with this partner. Really enjoyed uh, playing with this partner. Uh, but we have a whole other set to play. We'll see if we can keep this momentum going. Overall, kind of the themes that I'm seeing re-watching it is we were definitely the aggressors. Uh, we were both coming in behind serves, returns. Uh, the other team was a little bit, uh, they came in behind some stuff too, but they were more content to stay one up, one back, and that kind of gave us the, the opening. Uh, and sometimes you end up shooting yourself in the foot, but so far we've been able to put enough put away shots in play and just outright pressure the baseline player enough to make a lot of errors that we've had control so far. So in part two, we'll see if we can continue that. Brand new format here, what do you think? Uh, if you've enjoyed this, do me a favor and click the like button. And I'd love to hear your general feedback uh, down below. Uh, obviously in league matches, like we can't set up a commentary booth. That'd be funny, huh? <laughs> we can't set up a commentary booth and have Sanset and, <laughs> and Brody like laughing and uh, drinking beers. Uh, that'd be fun, but uh, we can't do that in a league match. So, um, but we, I, I still, I love the commentary kind of setup. So what do you think about this setup? Let me know in the comments down below. Would it be cool to have maybe like my partner here talking about it with me, or maybe, you know, Ira or some other, you know, just some other player besides my partner? What, I, what ideas do you have and what would you like to see with this kind of uh, analysis? Thanks for watching. Don't miss part two. I'll catch you in the next one.